P5-31A. Yeah, we're live. Live. <laughs> Journalize the following transactions that occurred in September 2015 for Purple Haze, assuming the perpetual inventory system is being used. No explanations are needed. Identify each accounts payable and accounts receivable with the vendor or customer's name. Record debits first, then credits. So this one specifically is telling you put debits first, then credits. I think before this, you could get away and go, going with res reverse order, but this time we have to do it. Uh, they have the list of transactions here, <coughs> but like most of these problems, they're restating what the transaction is right, up, right in front of the input field. So we don't really need to have this open. Um, Okay, so we purchased merchandise inventory on account from Simon Simon Wholesalers for four thousand. And what does this mean? Anybody? Well, that's your discount, uh, discount returns. Yeah. So we get yes, we get two percent off if we pay in fifteen days. Otherwise, all of it, you know, N you would think means net. That would be net of discount, but that N means all of it is due by the end of the month. So in this case, they went EOM, end of the month, okay? Because different months end on different dates, right? They don't always end on the 30th, right? Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna book a debit to my merchandise inventory for 4,000. And then we did it on account, so I'm gonna put in accounts payable, and now they want me to be more specific. So I'm gonna go accounts payable, Simon wholesalers. So I know that it's that's the vendor that I have to pay. Okay. Now we paid the freight bill on the September 3rd purchase. Okay. And notice that was FOB shipping point. So that means that we were responsible for, for the cost of the shipping from the shipping point. Okay. So we're gonna put that right into merchandise inventory because we're on the perpetual system. And we're gonna credit cash, because it says we paid, right? It has the word paid in here, so that means that cash was expended. Okay. Okay, now on September 4th, we purchased merchandise inventory for cash. So straight out cash. We don't have to worry about any kind of accounts payable. $2,300. That's going to go into my merchandise inventory account. And then I'm going to credit cash $2,300. Why was the second one that didn't go into the freight in? Because it's not the periodic system. If you were doing it in the periodic system, you would book it to freight in. But we're doing the perpetual system. See? So in the perpetual system, we can, we can book things directly to that inventory account. Okay, so when, if we were in the periodic system, and this is a really good question, then we would have the freight in account. We would have to book it to the freight in account. Okay, good. Okay, Okay. now we return $1,200 worth of inventory from the September 3rd purchase. So this purchase, we're gonna basically reverse what these accounts do for $1,200. So look at that right here, September 3rd, right? If I'm returning 1,200, I just have to flip flop the debit and credit, but use $1,200. So I'm gonna debit accounts payable and credit merchandise inventory. And I gotta be specific about the accounts payable that I debit. Simmon wholesalers, and I'm reducing inventory. See that credit to inventory? That's a reduction. Everybody follow. Okay. Okay, now we sold merchandise inventory to Houston Company for $5,800 on account. And we're get, now we're giving terms. We're saying 1% if paid in 15 days. Otherwise, all of it is due in 35 days. Okay. And they come right out and they tell us what the cost of goods sold is. So I'm going to book the sale first. I'm going to have an accounts receivable from Houston company. This is kind of a switching point here because it's easy to, con 
confuse the accounts payable side of things with the accounts receivable because your brain is in the mode of thinking about buying stuff. But now at this point in time, September 8, we turn around and we sell something. Okay. So remember, now we're the seller. We're no longer the customer. We're no longer buying. Okay. So we sell it for a right five thousand eight hundred dollars. We do it on account. We're going to have sales revenue five thousand eight hundred. Now read carefully. Begin by preparing the entry to journalize the sale por portion of the transaction. Do not record the expense related to the sale. We will do that in the following step. Okay. So the cost of goods sold aspect of this sale, we're going to do it now. We're going to do it in this following field here. Okay. You know, normally we would book it all together, but they want you to take it in steps so you can see what's happening. We have to book a debit to cost of goods sold. What kind of account is cost of goods sold? I said earlier, what type of account is it? Say it loud. Yeah, it, it increases with a debit, but what type of account is it? Cost of goods sold. You remember I said it, I said it's, it's an expense. It doesn't have the word expense on it, but it's an expense. Okay. All right, and I'm going to take it out of inventory, so I'm reducing inventory. So we're taking the cost of those items that we sold up here, we're taking the cost out of inventory, right? This is the price that we charge for it. This is what it costs us. You know, real quickly here, right on the side, yeah? We could figure out our gross profit. Our gross profit is the revenue, 5,800, minus the cost of goods sold. So I got a gross profit of 5,800 minus 2,552, right? So we got $3,248 in gross profit on this sale alone. Now, here's another term you might want to know. It's called gross profit percentage. If I want to figure out the gross profit percentage, I take the gross profit of $3,248 and I divide it by the sales price, which is $5,800. So I can do that real quickly. I'll take $3,248, divide by $5,800. My gross profit percentage is 56%, right? I just moved the decimal, right? It's in decimal form. Move it to the right two spaces. You got a 56% gross profit percentage, okay? So far, so good, yeah? Okay. Now, what happens on September 9th? We purchase merchandise inventory on account from Terran wholesalers. $6,000, and the terms are 2% in 10 days, otherwise all of it in 30. And this one is FOB destination. So that means that we're not going to be paying for the shipping. This Terran company pays for the shipping. Okay. So we shouldn't have a shipping bill related to this. Um, so I'm going to have more inventory, and then I'm going to have an accounts payable from Terran, 6000 so when we come around to having to pay these things off, we gotta go and we gotta look at our terms, we gotta look back at the date, and we gotta figure out if we're paying within the discount period or if we're beyond the discount period. Okay. Do you not do that for the um, when you when you sell? When you sell, the onus is on the custom on your customer to make the payment. So it's gonna be based on when you re when when they make the payment then you'll determine whether there's a discount or not, right? So they're the ones driving it. They're initiating um, the payment. So when the, if the customer decides to pay within the discount period, then you'll book a sales discount, right? Okay. Now, on September 10th, made payment to Simmon wholesalers for goods purchased on September 3rd. I'm gonna go back up and look at September 3rd. On September 3rd, we bought 4,000 and it said 2% if paid within 15 days. So it looks like we're within 15 days because September 3rd to the 10th is like six days. So we're paying within the discount period. We're gonna take that 2%. But be careful because do we still owe 4,000? Is that the balance in our accounts payable? It isn't, right? Because it started off as 4,000, but down here, Right? We return 
1,200. You see that? Okay, so you might want to make yourself a, like a T account. It's nice to have T accounts, then you have the running balance for that particular um, accounts payable, right? So I got accounts payable, and that was, I'm calling it Simon, but I don't think it's Simon, yeah. Okay, so initially on September 3rd, we had 4,000 booked to that, right? Nine slash three, okay? But as you scroll down, you notice on September 6th, right? We returned 1,200, right? Nine six. And then we're getting ready to make payment here. We got to know how much we owe, right? So if you ran this T account and then you ran a balance on it, okay, you only owe 4,000 minus 1,200. So this is the balance, okay? You see how I got the balance? You guys know how to get a balance in an account, right? So we don't want to be doing our discount based on 4,000. We need to be doing our discount based on 2,800, okay? And we're going to get a 2% discount because we paid within 15 days. So you probably do a little bit of math and you figure out 2% times 2,800 equals, right? You're going to get $56 off, okay? So that's going to be the discount. Um, the amount that you're going to have to pay is the difference between 2800 minus the discount, okay? So that's the amount due, okay? So we have all of our figures. We just have, <coughs> to, we just have to book it, okay? We just have to record the transaction. Maybe I can line them up like this. So we don't have to keep popping back and forth. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to book a debit to my accounts payable simon for 2800 So I'm making this go away, what I have highlighted in yellow here. All of that is going to go away. And then I'm going to have a <coughs> purchase discount of $56. And then the amount of cash that we have to spend is only 2744 Okay. Now, I made a mistake. Did you see it? Right? See, they th they've thrown in those accounts that pertain to the periodic system. Purchase discounts are not in the periodic system, right? We just book it straight to inventory. We reduce the inventory balance directly, right? So we don't have purchase discount, we don't have the purchase discount account in the perpetual system, but we still recognize purchase discounts. It's just that we decrease inventory directly. Okay? If it were the periodic system, then we would use this purchase discount account. But this is the perpetual system, so we book it to merchandise inventory. Does everybody see that? Okay. That's an asset, right? Inventory is an asset. And because we only paid 2744 versus 2800 we should only have our inventory recorded at 2744 That's why we're shaving off $56 from the inventory account. Okay, we receive payment from Houston Company less discount. Houston Company is a company that we sold inventory to, okay? This one we might not need a T account. Let's go back and look. When did we sell this stuff? September 8th. And we said, Houston Company, you get a 1% discount if you pay within 15 days. Okay, so the sale amount was 5,800. And if they get the discount, 
it's going to be 1% off, so probably $58, right? So this is the discount, which is equal to 1% off, right? So the amount that we're going to get, the payment, the payment that we're going to receive is the difference between 5800 and the $58 discount. Now this is a sales discount. It's not a purchase discount. The way we record sales discounts is the same in both the perpetual and the periodic systems. Okay? It's no different. Okay? It's just the purchase stuff that's different. Go ahead. What if the discount is like a point, like 58 points more? That's my equation I have to look at You know I'd have to look at that. Does it, it doesn't say anything about rounding, right? I think they should do it as like the whole decimal point. Like you can do one point whatever. So you're a half a point, five point six. Because what I did was if you do like, he does it separate. If you do like one percent times the 58 and then actually subtract it instead of doing it all at one point. Like you can do five of them. So you know how you can find the decimal two different ways? Let me take a look a little later and then we'll, let me book this for you first here, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna get the payment. We're gonna get cash of 5,742. And then we're gonna have a sales discount of 58. And then we're gonna reduce our accounts receivable by the full amount, 5,800. Give me your number real quick. Oh, wait, did you take the sold merchandise or did you take cost of goods? I took what I sold it for. Because that's what I'm waiting to collect. So you're not gonna do anything with the cost of goods sold when you figure out a sales discount. A sales discount is based on the sales figure. Yeah. Okay, now, after negotiations, we received a $200 allowance from Terran wholesalers, okay? An allowance is kind of like when you, you get a concession from your, your uh, vendor, right? Oh, we're gonna give you this allowance. We're gonna give you this uh, credit to your account, okay? So, what we need to do is we need to reduce the Terran wholesalers' accounts payable by 200 and then we're gonna reduce the merchandise inventory account by 200. Okay. There you go. And then you can always watch this again because I'll put the link to it on the internet or uh, into Lao Lima. Um, you got a question on it? Or? Okay, you're good, okay. Now we sold merchandise inventory to Julian Company, $2,700 on account, and the terms are 3% if paid in 10 days, otherwise all of it is due at the end of the month, and they give us the cost of goods sold figure. So really similar, very, 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 very similar to this transaction that we did up here. Let me scroll to it right here. When we made this sale, right, we booked the sales revenue, then we booked the cost of goods sold. Okay, so we're kind of doing the same thing with different numbers and a different customer. So now we got accounts receivable, Julian Company, $2,700, and then we're gonna have sales revenue, $2,700. That's the sales piece of it. And then at the same time, we're supposed to be booking cost of goods sold. So they tell me cost of goods sold is $1,000, $134, right? I'll go ahead and put the numbers in. And that's gonna go to an expense account called cost of goods sold. And then we're gonna reduce inventory, right? So we're basically moving it out of the asset account and sticking it into an expense account when the sale occurs. Why do we do it this way? Why don't we book all the inventory as an expense when we buy it? Well, it's the matching principle, right? We need to match the cost of the item to the revenue that it generated, okay? 
So we only recognize it as an expense when we sell it. Okay, it gets recognized as an expense when the sale occurs. Okay, now we got Terran, right? Remember Terran. We're making a payment less allowance to Terran wholesalers for goods purchased on September 9th. So let's go back and look at September 9th. On September 9th, it said we bought 6,000, so you could easily take the same kind of T account thing and make yourself another one, and we'll call it Terran, okay? And then you don't need what's in there now because we're gonna put new stuff in there. It says, on September 9th, we, made, we bought from Terran 6,000. So that would be nine, nine, okay? And then what else happened with Terran? You kind of need to go scroll down and take a look. Oh, okay, we returned 200. So 200 is gonna reduce, right? On the 13th here, right? September, 200 was returned. And then just, just to be safe, I would keep scrolling to check and make sure, okay, nothing else happened with Terran. Now, we were supposed to pay within 10 days to get the discount. We bought it on the 9th, and now it's the 22nd, okay? So you might want to use your fingers 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. that's already 14 days. We're not going to get the discount. <coughs> we're, not, we're not entitled to the discount because we paid beyond the discount terms. So we're going to have to pay the full balance. It's just that we got to make sure we know the full balance, right? So the full balance is going to be $5,800 because it's the 6000 that was initially recorded minus the allowance amount. Okay, So we just have to pay off Terran wholesalers $5,800 and we'll use cash to pay that off $5,800. Everybody got that one. Okay. So no discount on that one because we were outside of the discount time frame. Okay. Okay, Julie and company returned six hundred dollars of merchandise sold on September fifteenth. And the cost of goods sold on that specific merchandise that was returned was two hundred fifty two dollars. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to Stick it back in inventory. Well, we'll do that. That's the second step, right? We have to take away the accounts receivable from Julian, right? So now we have an account called sales returns and allowances. We're going to debit that account, $600. Okay. And then the second piece will be to bring the inventory back onto our books because the items are being returned. So we're gonna debit merchandise inventory for the cost of $252. And then we're gonna credit cost of goods sold. Okay, so we're actually reducing cost of goods sold. Right? That inventory came back to us. So we're reducing, we're reducing the expense and increasing inventory. Take a quick look at that. Okay. Now on the 25th, we sold merchandise inventory to Smead for $2,000 on account, um, and it cost us $880. We gave terms of 1% in 10 days, otherwise all of it is due in 30. Um, and it's called FOB Shipping Point. As a courteous, courtesy to Smead, $40 of freight was added to the invoice for which case was paid by Purple Haze. Okay. So we're going to prepare a compound journal entry to journalize the sale and full amount of the receivable from this transaction. Do not record the expense related to this sale. We will do that in the following step. Okay. 
So we're going to have an accounts receivable SMEAD, right? We're going to have sales revenue. And then we're going to have hold on. $40, right? We can't do that. Two thousand. Two thousand. Let me see here. It says, as a court courtesy to Smeed, forty dollars of freight was added to the invoice for which cash was paid by Purple Haze. So they want me to add this forty dollars to the invoice. I don't know that doesn't look right but it it worked okay so what they're saying is the sales the sale was actually two thousand dollars but we went ahead and paid for the freight to ship it and we're billing it back to Smeed so we're charging Smeed two thousand forty dollars of which two thousand is for the items that we sold and then forty dollars is for freight. So we got to be real careful because when we do our discount, the discount would only be computed on the the, the amount we charged for the items, not on the amount that we charge for the freight. You see what I'm saying? So this one percent discount only pertains to the items that were sold. It doesn't pertain to the freight charge. Okay. Now they want me to book the cost of goods sold. They say that it's eight hundred and eighty dollars. We did two of these already, so we should be pretty good about it. Debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory, $880. <coughs> Fantastic. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. After negotiations, we granted a $300 allowance to SME <coughs> for merchandise purchased on September 25th. So we're going to have a sales returns and allowance, and then we're going to decrease the account receivable from Smeed by $300. What is an allowance? It's, it's like a credit. They give, they're giving Smeed a credit. You know, have you ever, I would equate it to like, you know, if you spent so much at Walgreens and then they give you that. You see, come you got five dollars that you can apply, yeah. But on a bigger scale here, okay. We're gonna need a T account when it comes to this Smeed company, so I'll get us I'll get us ready over here. Okay. Okay, now it says we receive payment from Smeed less the discount. So you might scribble it on a piece of paper when you're trying to figure this out. Or you could do it in your head, but if there's a lot of transactions, it gets, gets to be a lot of stuff going on. So when did we first sell to Smeed? Here, right? We sold Smeed 2000 in sales revenue. But the accounts receivable came out to being 2040. Okay. Then there was a return of 300. Okay. So the accounts receivable balance. Okay. Is 1730, right? Let's see. 1740, right? Now remember, $40 of that was for shipping. So I'm only going to take the discount on $1,700. Okay, so we got to figure out the discount. When we made this sale, it was 1% in 10 days. Okay, so if you take 1% 
of 1700, you get $17. Okay. So I'm going to call this my discount. This was the sale amount. Sell less the allowance. Okay. So this is going to be the payment received for that sale. And then you got to add the $40 to that, right? Because this is for the freight. So the actual payment received would be $17.23. So I'm going to book 1723 to cash. Okay. Then I'm going to have a sales discount of $17. And I'm going to have a accounts payable Accounts receivable SMEED going away of 1,700. We skipped a skip, didn't we? Allowance and discount. Oh, yeah, the allowance. Plus they don't want the freight in there, right? There you go. There you go. Okay, so over here in yellow, all of their accounts receivable is going away. They no longer owe the 1740. They're paying 1723 cash, which is the sales amount reduced by the discount, plus $40 for freight. Okay? And then there's a $17 sales discount, which is 1% of the sale less the allowance, right? Here's the original sale. Well, the original sale is 2000 along with the $40 freight. Here's the allowance, 300, okay? So that's probably the, the tougher one in this whole problem, I would say. Because you gotta split hairs on that. You gotta keep the freight charge separate from what the merchandise sale was, right? Because they're only getting a discount on the merchandise sale. Yeah, so you gotta you gotta keep that separate. You gotta keep the the freight charge and the actual sale amount separate when you're figuring out the sales discount. Okay. Now it says we receive payment from Julian Company less the return. So that's a different account receivable. You might want to have another T account going, and we'll call it Julian Company. Okay. And let's go back and check and see when we first had any kind of interaction with Julian Company. Um, Simon Houston, Taryn, Simon Houston, Taryn, Julian. Okay, so we first had an accounts receivable on September 15th for 2700 from Julian Company. And they were given 3% if they pay in 10 days. Okay, and we come down here and there's a return. So accounts receivable goes down by 600. I'm just posting, right? Just like we always did. Posting from the journal to the T account. 600 on September 23rd. Okay. 
And then anything else happen with Julian? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Now it's September 30th. So September 15th to September 30th is roughly 15 days. Originally, we had 10, they had 10 days to get the discount. So they're outside of the discount time frame. They're going to owe $2,100. Okay, so they're making payment on $2,100. We're going to have $2,100 cash. And that's going to go debit cash and credit accounts receivable Julian company. Nice work. Oop, go back, take a look. Is there any piece in there that you want me to scroll back to or or anything you were confused on? 